Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlleryTutors.com. Now, you may have heard of an economy, uh, and an economy is measured in a country by this stuff, which is money. Uh, chemistry has something similar, um, except instead of money, we're talking about atoms. And so, in this video, we're going to look at the atom economy. We're going to show you how you can calculate it, and we're also going to show you why it might be an advantage to have a high atom economy in terms of industry. So... Here's our equation. Now, an atom economy is measured by the molecular mass, or the MR, of the desired product, uh, divided by the sum of the MR of all products, multiplied by 100. Now, the sum exam modes, and OAQA in particular, have a slightly different formula, um, and this is basically mass of desired product, which is the same on the top, divided by the total mass of reactants, uh, times by 100. So, instead of um, the sum of all products, we're going to look at the, the sum of all the reactants instead, it still gets you the same answer. So it's not so much a problem. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, use uh, this formula here to work out the mass of a desired product. And we're gonna calculate its atom economy. Now you can't get this mixed up with percentage yield. You can actually have reactions that have a low atom economy, but a high percentage yield or vice versa. So you've got to make sure that uh, you are not confusing the two. So this is looking at how efficient a reaction is, whereas percentage yield is looking at the mass of product that you're actually making. So this is we're going to look at the uh, mass or the sorry the percentage atom economy of uh, calcium sulfate. This is our desired product, and so we're going to use this reaction, which is calcium carbonate, reacting it with sulfuric acid, and that will produce your salt, carbon dioxide, and water. So all we have to do is dead easy to do is we're going to uh, work out the total mass or the MR of calcium sulfate, uh, and this should be 136.2. So we're gonna put that there. So this is our desired product, that's what we want to work out. Again, in the exam, they will tell you what the desired product will be, or you would have worked it out beforehand. Uh, and then we're gonna divide that by the sum or sum of the MR of all products, or the total mass of reactants. The number is going to be the same, it's just formalities in this case. Uh, and so in this reaction, it's gonna be 198.2. Okay, so if we put that into our calculator, obviously we're going to multiply the whole lot by 100 as well, otherwise we won't get a percentage. Uh, so if we put that into our calculator, we should get 68.7%. Now, that uh, is the percentage atom economy, and you might think, well, is that good or is that bad? Well, it depends on the product that you're making. But ultimately, industry wants to try and get the highest atom economy possible for several reasons. One of them is um, there's actually less waste. If more of your atoms that you're putting in is going to make the useful product, you have less waste. And hence, that is obviously better for the environment as well, because you're not having to put this waste into uh, landfill or try and dispose of it as well, which you have to dispose of it properly. You can't just dump it into a big hole. Some chemicals are pretty dangerous. And they have to be treated beforehand. So um, it's also a more sustainable way as well of actually uh, producing products. Because if more of your atoms from your raw materials are going into making the product, you don't have as much waste. So you don't need to use as much raw materials. So you're preserving these raw materials for other uses, which is obviously a massive benefit. Uh, and also, for the same reason, it's actually cheaper. Cheaper because um, if you've got your product, you don't have to spend a lot of money separating the impurities from it. Uh, and also, you don't have to spend expensive disposal costs to try and get rid of your waste products or do something with them, you might have to treat them. So for example, if it's an acidic gas you're producing, you have to try and neutralize that, which is gonna cost the company money. So you've gotta make sure um, that ultimately the high atom economy is a, a, help, a lot better than having a low atom economy. And um, there's also uh, some reactions which are actually 100% atom economies. And so this is basically where you have a reaction where all of the atoms that are in the reactants go into the product that you want, the desired product. So an example of this could be, and we'll do this in blue, uh, it could be ammonia and hydrochloric acid. So NH3 plus HCl, uh, and you can see this would form something called ammonium chloride. Uh, now you can see we've only got one product here, so that is an absolute classic sign of 100% atom economy. There's no other waste product there. This is the product we're wanting. So ultimately, this is the best you can effectively get. Uh, you can get some addition reactions as well, where you add things on. So for example, alkenes, 
Uh, adding bromine to alkene, for example, uh, is also an example of an addition reaction, and so therefore would be 100% atom economy. But um, you do need to know all these little bits here as well, the advantages uh, to atom economy, uh, and obviously the equation. Make sure you pick the right equation. Check your specification to make sure you've got the right um, formula there. But either way, it still works out the same way. That's it. Bye-bye.